I was in down at the local secondhand store looking for some bargains, and I think I may have just found one. Now, did I get burned? That's the thing. Is this going to work, or is it not? Did I make a good buy, or did I make a bad buy? I paid 10 bucks for it, so I didn't spend a lot. But let's see with what I got. Will it work properly or not? Let's check it out. Went down to the Value Village today. I was actually looking for tape decks that I could possibly steal a motor out of to fix a, a tape deck I've got that's got a shot motor. And of course, no cassette decks. They don't have those anymore. But I did find this Toshiba DVD recorder. This is a model DR5. And what I found interesting on this one, it was 10 bucks. No remote control, but uh, I just happen to have a Toshiba remote for the many other Toshiba DVD recorders that I've got, which I'm sure this will probably control it. But um, what I noticed on this one here was, and the reason I grabbed this one was because, well, I couldn't resist it for the price, 10 bucks. But you see, it supports DVD RAM, DVD R, and DVD RW recording. And that's important because I've got some DVD RAM discs and I want to make sure that I'm going to be able to play them back long into the future. I don't record much to them anymore, but I still have stuff that's recorded on DVD RAM that I'd like to be able to play back. So I thought for, for 10 bucks, I'll take a chance. And this is not the only one I picked up for 10 bucks, by the way. I picked up another one, but we'll be looking at that one. We'll be looking at that one separate. So I'll keep you guys guessing as to what I got. And it was even a better deal than this. Neat thing about this thing is it has a firewire input. So what that means is for recording off of Digital 8 and Mini DV, this will make as good a quality a recording as you'll ever get because the data from the tape is going to be transferred over digitally and yes, the DV data is is fixed compression, 25 megabits, and it's going to be reduced down to like 5 to 10, depending on the recording speed. But it's all done digitally. There's no there's no analog translation, and the quality I get off of them is, is very good. And now people say, oh, why why do you, well, people, why, people don't want stuff on DVD anymore? But that's not true because I do a lot of I do a lot of archiving, like a lot of archiving, and I would say. Nine out of ten of my customers still want the material put onto a physical disc. A lot of them will, will want it on a USB stick as well, but the vast majority want their footage on a physical disc because data on a D, on a memory stick or a hard drive can easily be corrupted. So I use DVD recorders a lot. I go through a lot of discs. On an average month, I'll go through 100 discs, 100 blank discs a month. So I go through quite a few. So whenever I can grab one of these these uh, machines, I snag one up because they're always good to have. They're always good to have. And the fact that this one here supports DVD RAM makes it even that much more interesting. I'm going to see if this thing works, first of all, and hopefully it does. So my power button on here, it says hello on the screen. It's turned it on, but I have no video on the screen. I've got no output on this. Now I'm thinking it might be in the wrong mode. So I wonder if my video mode button on here will do anything. Let's just try the mode button. Put it into 480. Nothing. No output. Now this does have HDMI out, which the TV I'm using does not have HDMI in. So I can't see what I'm doing on this TV. I might be able to see it on the monitor that I'm using. So I'm going to try plugging the uh, output into my my camera monitor here. As I have a, an HDMI cable going over to my, my viewfinder monitor. And we'll see whether this thing's got a picture. So let me just point the camera up at the screen so you guys can follow along at home. I'm just going to plug this into the HDMI out on here and see whether I get anything. 
not so okay there we go so it does have a picture but what I want is I want to be able to get a picture on my other monitor so let's just see whether this setup works ah good it does AV output it's uh, it's not what I want where are we here setup AV output general I want the uh, composite output working so I'm going to restore this thing to factory we'll see whether that will turn on the analog output which it, it did Okay, now I've got it displaying over on my plasma. Let's see some of the other some of the other options we've got on this one. TV channels, schedule, recording, other. What's in the other? JPEG interval. Oh, so it'll display it'll display JPEGs like a slideshow. Cool. TV channels. I'm just going to scan the, the channels on my house cable. So it has an analog tuner built in. So this will just go through and scan channels that I have on my in-house cable system should only be one more channel it should be that one okay I won't let this thing go through and then we're gonna play around with this and see if it records and plays and how it works and I'll pull it apart so you guys can see the inside of it too so how's that for a beefy looking system it's got this big power supply over here on its own separate board looking at the three circuit boards they all appear to be manufactured from different companies, just from their, their coloring of them. Looks like they've just used an off-the-shelf, you know, switching power supply. It's got a little battery backup on here for the clock. But big diodes that are soldered down too, and they're hot too. Man, these things are warm. But big, big diodes that are well off the circuit board itself that sound mounted a wall off the board so that they don't fracture the connections because these things produce a fair bit of heat with uh, standoffs on here soldered down to them and uh, capacitors look good I don't see any bulging on any of the capacitors here this is the the video board over here which has got the the video output and component output and HDMI interface over here the DVD drive itself May 2006 this looks to be probably a standard IDE drive is it? Is this a standard drive in this or not? Uh, it doesn't, I can't tell from here but it's more than likely a, like a computer type drive maybe not maybe a custom drive this looks like the interface right here and on the back here this is the analog board so you've got uh, the analog tuner and the audio video input on the back there is another AV input on the front on this unit on the front here there's another AV input with an S video input there's an S video input on the back as well and of course the DV input that connects to the digital board So let's just see whether this thing works. I've got the all the channels have been scanned in. Get out of this 
this uh, setting here. How do we get out of there? Return. Okay. Okay, let's open this up and see what it does. Looks like it supports cartridge based and non cartridge based discs. So let's put a cartridge based disc in. As you can see, when it loads a cartridge, it opens up the window. Is it going to play? Ah, it's not going to play. I may have a dog here. It says no disc. We'll try a couple discs on this thing. It's not loading the disc. It says no disc. Let's try a different disc. I'll try some regular discs in it as well. We may have to take this drive apart and see whether I can make this thing work. Okay, I can hear something happening now. It says load on the screen. On the display here it says load on the front on the LED screen. But it's not playing. I think this drive bad it says bad. Hmm. I do believe this unit has a problem. We'll try the third disc. This is a cartridge less type disc. Another DVD RAM, and we'll see whether it will read this one. Did I just lose ten dollars? Okay, I can hear something happening. It says stop on the screen. Okay. Ah, it's playing. Maybe it just doesn't like these Memorex discs. I've had problems with Memorex discs. They were junk. Memorex discs, these, the Memorex DVD RAM discs were always crap. Like I, I had trouble with them in my other players. That's why the one of them says skips. It is uh, playing this disc. It's playing it fine. There it is. This is the Montreal Jazz Festival. I've got the sound turned off here. Let's just see whether the all the controls work on here. Let's go fast forward. Back to play. Skip. Yeah, there's a second program recorded on here. Looks like. How about a third? Is there a third? No, there's only two programs recorded on this. I gotta be careful because I might get to, I might get nailed for this. These are music videos, so I'll stop that from playing. But um, it is playing it. So it looks like it might work. I'm going to go grab a recordable disc that I can make some recordings on and we'll see if it records. Before doing that, I'm just going to, I'm going to try the one of the uh, Memorex ones that wouldn't load before. See if it's going to read it now. Maybe it just wanted to try loading a few times. Something may have been sticking inside the drive. We'll see if it'll read this disc. Ah, oh, looks like it's going to read it this time. There we go. 
This was that concert off of Much Music. Closed captions. Cool. I get the mute on on the TV and it's it's playing the closed captions. So this unit appears to be working. Excellent. I didn't waste ten bucks. I'll try this other one that also wouldn't read. I'll try this again. See whether this one does anything. Hmm. Okay, I hear it spinning up. This just doesn't seem to be doing anything bad. It says this one's bad. Hmm. Okay, let's. Okay, what we'll do is we'll pull this drive apart and to see whether it needs a cleaning. And then we'll try recording some stuff. Put a regular DVD in and see what it does. Yeah, and this one's playing okay. This is my air show disc. So I read that one pretty quick, no problem. Lots of torque, so there's no problem with belts on the drive. Well, let's open the drive up and uh, see what makes this thing tick. The drive appears to be held in place with three screws. One on the back here and one on either side, and this whole drive should lift out. I tell you, I saw something funny today when I was, when I was going to actually pick this thing up. I was driving down the freeway and I saw some guy in a Tesla Model X. That's the one with the ridiculous gull wing doors. But he was pulling about a 20, I'm going to say 22 to 25 foot trailer behind this car, which looked ridiculous. The trailer was bigger than the car, much bigger. You'd expect to see a, a big pickup pulling a, a trailer like this. Anyway, this guy's pulling, going camping, I guess, in his Tesla, and I'm thinking to myself, how is this guy going to charge up his car with a trailer attached? You know, it's, it, obviously his, his electric range is going to be far less pulling a trailer than just the car itself. So he's going to have to charge this thing up a little more frequently than he would if he was just, you know, driving the car itself. Um, but the problem is he's got this giant trailer sticking to the back of the car, so he's going to have to, obviously take the trailer off and uh, park his trailer somewhere, go charge his car and then go pick his trailer up again. I thought, isn't that ridiculous? But uh, what people, the things that people will do, this thing's as sharp as a knife, it just sliced my thumb. There's the, the drive itself, I unplugged the, the connector over here, seems to be a completely sealed unit. This top should come off to see what's uh, what's in here. So let's just push this to the back and we'll remove the top. Take a peek inside. There's a good chance there's going to be pieces that fall off this thing when I take the top off because it's got that uh, the disc uh, opening. Um, mechanism to open up the disc uh, cartridge so there's a good chance that something's gonna fly out of here when I open this thing up it may never go back together but hopefully it will oh there you go it actually it's quite clean in here. Laser pickup.
Looks like there's grease on the rails, so there's nothing sticking in here. Probably wouldn't hurt to clean off the all the dirt that's on the disc chuck here, the disc platter. There's a bit of dirt on there. I'll clean that off, but the, the laser lens looks to be fairly clean. I don't see any any debris on the lens. That's that's good. Usually these things are covered with dust, right? Or if it came out of a smoker's house, they're they're yellow from the smoke. But it looks to be in good shape. Just the the disc clamp or the disc table, I should say, appears to be kind of dirty. So we'll just wipe this off, clean this up a bit. I don't even know if it's worth wiping that lens off. It doesn't look to be dirty. But we'll, we'll give it a wipe. There's a belt over here for the, the loading motor. Down, they can pull the tray out. The entire tray will lift right out of this unit. But it looks to be pretty clean in here. Here's our sled motor. Lubricant looks to be fine. It's got the yellow grease on it. Blow some dust out. Other than that, though, it uh, looks to be good. I don't see any. Don't see any indication of anything that's. Uh, this this looks like it's got very low hours on it. You know, just looking at it, it looks to be in really pretty pretty clean, good condition. couple of detection switches over here what these are what these are for is to detect when you put it in a, a cartridge based disc it detects whether the disc is in place or whether you've got the there's a there's a record tab on some of them that you can lock not these ones but the, the Panasonic ones I believe had a little switch you could slide it over on the bottom and it would detect whether you were right protecting your disc or not. These these cheap discs don't have it though, these Memorex ones. These ones were really cheap. Put this thing back together and hope it will still work. I'll go get a, a DVD RAM disc that I can record on. I've got one that I think is completely blank. We can try doing some recording on this unit on RAM discs and rewritable discs and see if it works. If it does, excellent!
That's good. It opened the drawer. It opened up the, the slot on the front. At least that part's working. Let's see if it'll play these discs now that I had trouble with before. And this disc is playing. We'll try the other disc that didn't play before. And no, it doesn't like this disc. It just says bad on the display. Look like at the front display. It says bad disc or just bad. I wonder why. I know that this is a bad disc because, uh, as I say, it, it was well used. I used to use these, as I've said before, for time shifting, and most of the discs were were played back on that uh, that. Panasonic player so they had to come out of the cartridge to uh, be played back the ones that just went in my DVD recorder I always left them in the cartridge I never took them out but the ones I used for time shifting were typically these discs and they came out of the cartridge or or these ones that didn't have a cartridge the cartridge was a really good idea it protected the discs from getting damaged optical discs when you, you get scratches on them if you get them in the right place it can certainly cause problems but if you keep your optical disc clean then uh, it, there's never any issues with them well here's something interesting it has a screensaver which is just the welcome screen bouncing around to stop burning that's kind of neat actually now you remember I said that I'd had trouble with these um, these Memorex DVD RAM discs this one here that isn't reading properly got a few scratches on it well they were uh, always troublesome discs right from day one I only ever got three of them and they were given to me and out of the three of them none of them worked properly or a lot of them had trouble this one got dropped and when it got dropped it landed right on the edge of the disc when I was taking it out of the cartridge as you can see what happened it uh, it separated so these Memorex DVD RAM discs were, were junk. What I ended up doing with this one is I ended up using the cartridge. Because I like the cartridge loading system. So I ended up putting a Panasonic disc into this one. As you can see, it's a Panasonic disc in this one. And I think I can record on this disc because I don't have anything on here or just a very short recording. So. I'm going to load this one up. We're going to try a recording on it. And then I got some stuff I'll show you. And th this is a dual sided disc, right? This is a 9.4 gig. You turn it over, right? I, I like the discs that are in cartridges and try to keep them that way because the, the discs that are free, like these ones here, you got to be careful because if you damage them, you know, if you drop them, depending on how they land on the edge, it can damage the disc. I've never had a Panasonic disc fail, but uh, those Memorex ones were, were just horrendous. Anyway, let's uh, check out this other disc. I've loaded, <coughs> loaded this disc. If I press my display button, there's 10 titles on it. Um, I can't seem to bring up what programs are on here. I can play them. Uh, but uh, I can't I can't index them what if once I go skip that takes me to the next program I believe yeah the next program so when I press the skip button it's taking me to each of the different each of the different programs that's on the disk but I can't bring up a menu now that's probably because I don't have the correct remote for this the disk menu button's not doing anything on this Toshiba playing a DVD RAM disk. There's no navigator button on this particular unit. All the other features work. No menus coming up. Top menu is not doing anything. I can change the I can change the recording speed. But if I want to navigate or erase something on here, 
I don't see any way of doing that. At least with this remote control, which is from a regular Toshiba DVD recorder, not one that has DVD RAM. But I'm curious, is, is the reason is is it because the disc was recorded on a Panasonic that it doesn't bring up a menu? So I've got a blank disc in. I'll press record and see if it records. There we go. It should be recording now. A red light is on on the front. And it should be recording. I'm just going to record my security cameras here for a, a minute or so. And see what happens. So if I stop it now. I'm curious whether I get a, a menu. Pressing the menu button here, nothing happening. How about top menu? I guess I still don't get. I still don't get a list, and I'm using a different remote now. This is for just a straight DVD recorder, Toshiba, not a combo uh, VCR and DVD. So this machine here must have had a specific button to play the menu back. If I press play. There's the recording I just made. Stop. Setup. But tell me what's on there. No, well, that's for setting it up to record. Okay, so what I have figured out is that the remote control for this one has another button on it which this one doesn't have I figured that out by going through the help page it's uh, called edit menu whereas this one's got menu list so I cannot re I cannot delete titles or edit titles on DVD RAM let's play around with the DVD RW and disk and see what I can do with that okay I've got a blank DVD dash RW disk and I'm going to, uh, we'll just record something off my in-house cable system on here. So this is a blank disc, but I'm going to format this disc. I want to make sure I'm in the right mode too, but we'll just, we'll just format this disc. It's, it's a blank disc. It's a disc I've used before, but it was erased. What? The disc is damaged or not compatible and cannot be used for recording. Well, isn't that interesting? I know there's nothing wrong with this disc. Uh, oh, it's starting to sound like maybe I got screwed. Okay, I took the disc in. I put it in my Toshiba DVR7, and it was it was able to record on the disc no problem, and it was formatted on my Toshiba. I put it into my Panasonic, and it told me the disc needed to be formatted, so I formatted it in the Panasonic. We'll see whether this one will recognize the disc formatted as a as a just a standard video DVD RW video mode, not VR mode or anything see if it will recognize this disc starting to look like this might be it might have been a bad purchase it's not rec well it, it, it plays DVD RAM disc so so but yeah it's not recognizing if I try to format it here am I going to get that same message as saying erase on the screen here okay now it seems to be recognizing the disc this time no it, it's not recognizing this disc. Isn't that interesting? Okay, I just grabbed another DVD-RW and put it in here and it's recognizing this disc. So it may be just that other disc that I was trying. It's one that's been used a lot in my other Toshiba machine because I, I use it quite a bit. There's times when I get um, tapes that people want to put onto, uh, onto digital and I'll just record it on a DVD disc rip it and then convert it to M or MP, MP4 rather than capture on the computer. It's, it's faster to capture it to disk and then rip it than it is to record it and encode it on the computer. Go figure. But uh, I've got a couple disks that I just reuse over and over and I erase them and, and reuse them and that disk has probably got a couple hundred recordings on it so maybe the disk itself it just didn't like it. This is a newer disk that's got fewer recordings. I popped it in here. It's formatted. 
let's uh, try a recording on this so I'll hit record and I'm going to record this and I want to see what happens whether uh, the, the menus and stuff work with this remote using DVD dash RW and of course DVD dash R should work I think this remote will work for that it just won't work with DVD RAM because it needs that specific button I guess my my Harmony remote will probably do it I'll have to load the program for the Harmony and see if I can edit DVD RAM discs with it but no big deal so I've just recorded another segment here we'll just stop it and then I'll see once it finishes writing the disc what I can do whether I can finalize the disc for example and whether I can erase the titles will it bring up my title or not no it doesn't if I press play I can play the recordings back there was the first one okay the disc has now been finalized so I select the first title there it is top menu brings up the second title I did program up my Harmony remote and I've now got the edit menu button on here Let's see if it does anything of course it doesn't do anything uh, let's stop this from playing that one works set up. Let's just unfinalize this disc. See when I unfinalize it whether I can access the edit menu and then we'll try the edit menu with the DVD RAM disc themselves and see whether I can bring up the main menu with that okay this disc should be unfinalized now will the edit menu do anything now ah there's my edit menu there's the two titles okay i've put the dvd ram disc back in i'm going to use the harmony remote now and I'll just see what we, what we get on here the edit menu will bring up the titles there's four titles on here that i've recorded So if I pick, yeah, it's edit menu. That's the one that brings us up. So if I select that one, it'll play that title. Edit menu, bring up the second title. Edit menu, bring up the fourth title, which is my security cameras. You see, that's how it works on this one. You need that edit menu button, otherwise it won't work to access the, the different titles when you're dealing with a, uh, a DVD RAM uh, disc or even a DVD RW if it's not finalized. Once it's finalized, the other remote works fine. Right, I can use the, uh, which one was it, the menu. The menu button or the top menu would uh, bring up the title, but uh, on unfinalized discs you need to use the edit menu button which is only on the right remote for this but I, I put it on my harmony so what I can also do now is I can go into what's called chapter viewer which will show me the individual chapters on each disc I can rename the titles and I can delete titles so for example if I wanted to delete just this third title I can go to that third title and press delete and it would ask me if I want to delete that title which I, I now delete it and you'll see what will happen is it should title 4 becomes title 3 and I just freed up that space and that's that's the beauty of DVD RAM is that you can treat the disk like a hard drive you can delete stuff in the middle and everything else will, will drop back. You can also edit, I don't know what, how accurate this machine is, but my Panasonic machines, I can actually edit out commercials and stuff. I can divide the titles. I think I can do the same on this. Uh, yeah, there's, there's chapter divide. So in other words, if I'm playing a recording, 
and if I hit chapter divide it should split it into two. So this disc is one that I recorded on a Panasonic. It's got 10 titles on it. As you can see I can scroll through in edit menu, pick the title I wish to watch and and play it. So it's compatible with disc recorded on my Panasonic. Which is good. I'm happy now. I can use this machine. It's working. Anyway, um, I haven't tried to record on a DVD-R disc, only because I don't want to uh, waste a disc for this. But it's recording okay on DVD-RW, and it's recording okay on DVD-RAM, at least on these ones. I had trouble with, uh, with one of these other ones. It wouldn't read it. Which one was it? It was this one here that says Skips Scratched. That particular disc, it wouldn't read. And of course, the reason why is these, these Memorex crap. If you're buying discs, don't buy Memorex ones. If you've got a DVD RAM, a buddy of mine, I was just talking to him about it tonight, and he's showing me on Amazon that these blank discs are going for like 50 bucks a pop. Now, they, they were never that expensive when they were new, but I guess they're getting they're hard to get now because I doubt that they're making them anymore. Um, but uh, yeah, the Memorex ones, they were terrible to begin with. As you can see here, this one here is just, it's just falling apart. Just from one little drop on the edge. Let's see if this disc now that wasn't reading earlier is going to read. Nope, that's refusing this disc. Surprise, surprise. This is not the only deck that machine that refuses to read this disc. Anyway, we've spent too long on this thing. It's working. I guess for 10 bucks it was worth it. Thanks for watching.